Hi, David Rosenberg here for the Psychopharmacology Institute. In this CAP, or Child and Adolescent Psychiatry Smart Take, we'll take a close look at the role of lithium in pediatric bipolar disorder and externalizing pediatric behavior disorders such as conduct disorder. Januri and colleagues do a nice job conducting a systematic review of randomized controlled trials. We know that in adults, lithium remains the gold standard of treatment for bipolar disorder, and it's been shown to have a neuroprotective effect as demonstrated by neuroimaging studies. But the role of lithium in pediatric bipolar disorder remains uncertain due to the lack of data in this area. Moreover, clinically, lithium is not uncommonly used for other pediatric behavior disorders, such as conduct disorder. The FDA has actually encouraged child and adolescent psychiatrists to get more evidence for lithium's role in pediatric bipolar disorder, but this still remains a work in progress. Lithium is FDA approved in children and adolescents 7 to 17 years of age for the acute treatment of mania, and for the ongoing maintenance treatment of bipolar disorder. Now, bipolar disorder can share a number of clinical features with ADHD, conduct disorder, oppositional defiant disorder, and disruptive mood dysregulation disorder. These conditions are often considered in the differential for pediatric bipolar disorder and can also coexist with bipolar disorder. So while not FDA approved, the use of lithium clinically is used by clinicians to treat conduct disorders, treatment-resistant depression, ADHD, and disruptive mood dysregulation disorder. On the other hand, because of concerns about the side effect profile of lithium and its monitoring requirements for kidney function, thyroid function, lithium toxicity, some clinicians are hesitant to prescribe lithium and consider it a high-maintenance medication. I actually know colleagues who do whatever they can not to prescribe lithium precisely because of how unuser friendly for both the patient and the clinician it is, mainly the monitoring requirements. So Janiri and colleagues conducted a timely and needed necessary systematic review focused on randomized controlled trials examining the use of lithium in pediatric bipolar disorder, conduct disorder, ADHD, and disruptive mood dysregulation disorder. So what did they find? 12 studies were considered good quality randomized controlled trials of lithium with eight in pediatric bipolar disorder and four on conduct disorder. The analysis included 857 patients treated with lithium. 673 of these 857 patients were bipolar patients, and lithium was found to be superior to placebo for manic mixed episode, but significantly less effective than the antipsychotics. Specifically, risperidone and quetiapine were found to have superior efficacy over lithium in the treatment of the manic phase of pediatric bipolar patients. There was no significant differences identified between lithium and divalproex in pediatric bipolar disorder. Acute mania in pediatric bipolar disorder appears to preferably respond to antipsychotics more than to lithium or divalproex. And this really isn't surprising. In fact, it's quite consistent with findings in adult bipolar disorder where antipsychotics have been shown to be superior to lithium in anticonvulsant treatment and more rapidly effective. There was considerable variability in lithium's effectiveness in pediatric bipolar disorder, ranging all the way from 32% to 84%. There was a real lack of study of maintenance treatment with lithium in pediatric bipolar disorder, and this is clearly an area where further controlled trials are urgently needed. As expected, comorbidity in pediatric bipolar disorder with other externalizing disorders was very high and found in over 98% of patients. More data is definitely needed, but the data to date suggests that very early onset bipolar disorder bipolar disorder with prominent mixed features, comorbid ADHD, and concurrent stimulant use is associated with poorer response to lithium. Of the 184 patients with conduct disorder, lithium was found to be effective particularly for aggressive behaviors. 
The good news is that there was no severe adverse events related to lithium use in patients with bipolar disorder or conduct disorder, and common side effects were very similar to what is seen in adults treated with lithium. Lithium discontinuation rates also didn't differ significantly between patients treated with lithium or placebo. The most common side effects of lithium were nausea, headache, and polyuria. So this systematic review provides support for the use of lithium in pediatric bipolar disorder and conduct disorder, where it was shown to be effective and well-tolerated in pediatric patients. That being said, as the FDA recommends, collecting more data is critical, as at present the data available is not sufficient. What I think is really noteworthy about this review is that it's the first systematic review examining lithium's efficacy and tolerability, both versus placebo, as well as compared to active comparator psychotropic medications. This is important as all too often industry-funded trials compare active medication to placebo, but because of their expense, they don't include an active comparator medication, which is even more clinically relevant to clinicians in the trenches when making decisions to know how a particular medication compares to other medications that are superior to placebo. And this is one of the flaws of the ADHD treatment literature. So overall, a good study, raising a lot of questions. More study is necessary. Lithium doesn't seem to be as effective, particularly as the second-generation antipsychotics, not as quickly effective, but it does seem that it can have a role in pediatric bipolar disorder when monitored appropriately. It seems to be safe and effective. <music>